good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, eh, all the Dhamma, Dhamma brother and sister. So today is the lecture number six. And uh, actually, we, we want to, uh, before we start, we want to highlight, some of you do not know where to download uh, the uh, materials. So what we, we, what we do is really we put it up into the dhammadownload.com. So uh, if you go to the face, uh, page main page, you will see the second uh, uh, place circle here is that a bit more in English. If you click here, and then you will see this uh, menu, this page. Uh, in this page, you, in the below, you will see Siali uh, Dauda Yuzuna Nyani. If you click this, it will lead to the another page called uh, Siali, a dedicated page for the Siali Dauda Yuzuna Nyani. So in there, you can actually uh, see all the materials, reference material and all the recorded videos, uh, then a lot of information. You can scroll down all the way down and also you can find a lot of information there as well. Right. So uh, for today, uh, we, we like to start our class by uh, paying homage to the Bodha by saying Namo Sada together. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambo Tassa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samba Sambo Tassa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samba Sambo so can I start now? Uh, yeah, yeah, we need to change uh, uh, to yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, Siale, you you can start now. Okay. Uh, so, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and nice to meet again. And today is the sixth lecture um, under the main theme of what does Abhidhamma mean to us. And today we are focusing on getting to know our body. So let's say for the previous four lectures, we have mainly focused on the mind, consciousness and mental states. Uh, with which we are composed of, or which we are doing activities, which we are experiencing, which we are living in our daily life. So as for today, we will focus on our body or the material qualities, which in Pali is known as the Rupa. So Rupa is also a big chapter and I, I'm not sure how much I can cover in this uh, two hours time. So first, uh, not going further, we will have a look at Rupa. So when we say that Rupa, I hope you still remember at least this concept that our mind, sorry, our uh, human beings, or we are composed of the five aggregates or in another term, Nama and Rupa. So as for Nama, it already covered the four mental aggregates, consciousness form, the aggregate itself, and we have feeling, Feeling is a separate group or separate aggregate in Bali we call Kanda, and so is the perception. Then the remaining 50 Chitasika, which uh, some people often confuse, is the Sankara Kanda or the aggregate of the mental formations. So, like uh, the wholesome quality, like uh, Sada, confidence, Sadi, mindfulness, Aloba, uh, non attachment, Adosa. A non hatred, anti hatred, or mitta, compassion, appreciative joy, karuna, mudita, you know, like wisdom, benya. And on the dark side, we have a craving or attachment, loba, uh, animosity, hatred, anger, depression, all these things which represent dosa, and like remorse, envy, jealousy, uh, and so on. All these pertain to that Sankara Kanda or the aggregate of the mental formations, which is composed of 50 of the five zero mental states. So after this uh, four mental aggregates, now we will look at the, our physical body, uh, which 
also form and aggregate itself. That is in Pali, we call a physical body or this body is the rupa and the aggregate or group is the khandas, rupa khanda. Then what is rupa? We are often heard of the term nama and rupa and so on as since we start learning Abhidhamma, or we would say like uh, for the previous five weeks, we have been uh, talking too much about Nama and Rupa, mind and matter. So Rupa has been translated in many ways, as you can see here, that is the matter, material quality, material property, materiality, corporeality, material form, and so many uh, different translations. So. What is important here is when we talk about this rupa, what we will focus is their inherent qualities that remain in them, not the material itself. So this is important thing to note. So looking uh, after seeing the translations, we also need to know what is the original meaning of rupa from which uh, Pali or the vowel root is the word rupa derived. So the Pali word rupa is derived from the Pali vowel root, raupati. It means transforms, deforms, changes, perishes. So from the meaning itself, it should be clear, right? Then we also have another definition from the commentary, which explain or which goes in much more detail. It says here that matter is so-called because it undergo changes, you know? When we talk about changes, you might also think that our mind, like our consciousness and mental states also keep on changing from moment to moment. Your state of mind this morning or yesterday or even one hour ago or five minutes or even one minute ago is totally different from what you are having now because it keeps on changing. But why is only this rupa called changes? It means it undergoes the obvious changes. The changes is very prominent. The changes is very obvious. So that's why only this uh, material qualities are known as the rupa. So what are the conditions here? Few conditions are given due to the adverse physical conditions like heat, cold, etc. Of course, our physical body keep on changing due to heat and cold. And for this additional information, et cetera, we have this quoting or quote from the commentary. It says that it is deformed by cold, heat, hunger, thirst, flies, mosquitoes, wind, sunburn and creeping things, etc. Still a lot more to come under in this, etc. See, how does it go by change? Uh, how does it got changed by cold? Apparently people who stay in the cold region or who go to or visit the cold region or countries or places would really notice that when there is extreme cold or when the stream is the cold is uh, very prominent, then we have this frostbite, right? Then um, even like the flesh got some time uh, destroy or damage from this cold heat. Yes, that's uh, very much apparent. Um, because when there is heat, then we have um, sweaty, we have fatigue, we have tiredness in the body. And of course, there is also hunger. Are you feeling hungry now? Or you might have already taken some snack or some meal. But what if you live without taking food for half day or even a day, right? Then uh, it's totally noticeable. And the Buddha say that among the diseases, hunger is the worst disease. Jikecha Parama Yoga. That's why we have to fill our body with the petrol, with the neutral, uh, with the fuel, we have to fill in to keep it going. Just as we fill the petrol or the fuel to the car, in the same way we have to give nutriment to our physical body so that we can keep going, we can keep alive. Thirst, yes. So there is also a saying that, um, 
the life of water is one morning or it means if you don't take drink water for a half day or one morning then um, it's caused lots of trouble and it caused lots of dehydration to our body and flies and mosquitoes yes these insects or these um, little things can also harm us in many ways um, and we also have some uh, poisonous things like bees and wasps and I have the experience of being stung by the wasps and I feel hot and reddish in my whole body and feeling very hot also and fortunately I could rush to the, uh, the, the volunteer. Uh, they bring me to the clinic and doctors say that if I arrive like half an hour later then I won't get survived. So these poisonous things also uh, make lots of changes in our physical body. And wind. Yes, to prevent wind, then we have to uh, stay inside the building because wind can also uh, cause us sick. Sunburn. In Asian country, we have lots of sunshine, but in some country, like they need lots of sunshine, so they have to go to the beach and get sunshine, right? So sunshine can also make a uh, sunburn can also make changes to the body when there is sunburn then um, even if you go for the sunbathing then you have to apply the uh, cream so that the skin didn't get burnt right and the creeping things uh, like the snakes and all these poisonous things can um, make lots of changes in our physical body so just to get familiarized with some pali words cold is the sita and then Heat is the owner. Down there you can see, see they not be robody, be me here also. So by cold also it changes and only not be robody, by heat also it got changes. Jika chaya be robody, hunger also bring changes to our body and uh, thirst, fly, we have this damsa, magasa, and then wada daba means that is the wind, hot wind. And then, uh, what, sorry, water is wind, and adapa is this heat, sunburn, and then sarisapa, this creeping things, sampasana. When getting into contact with this creeping thing, there can be changes to the physical body. So, this is what the Buddha has uh, expounded in the Kajaniya Soda of the Samyoga Nikaya. So, after seeing what, why it is called rupa, then we will have an overview of how this chapter or this Rupa chapter is composed of. So here we can see altogether five sections. After interpretation of the word Rupa, then we have the enumeration, we will count. But here uh, we will count just um, briefly. That is, we call Rupa Samo Desa. Odesa, Odesa means in brief, right? And then classification of matter. For the second section, we will classify this 28 matches by mean of one full method and by mean of two full methods, which you will see soon. And the third one, that is causes or the conditions of matches. So the Buddha say that matter doesn't arise automatically or accidentally, but it arises or it changes due to, due to the uh, different causes or condition, which is very important for us to understand. And grouping of matters. When we say about the material group, we got to have the understanding that matter doesn't arise alone or matter doesn't arise singly, not by itself. It calm always exists or it stays in a group. Just as we live in the society, in the community matters, they also live in a group. So I hope you still, you might still remember the concept of Nama, right? Under Nama, we have consciousness that knows or that awares the object and the mental states that always arises depending on consciousness. And uh, this is what we are influenced in daily life. So just along with the consciousness, there is always a group of the mental states or jetasika, which we call universal. So when we say mind, it is a 
basic unit of at least eight factors, one mind and seven mental states, right? So in the same way, this group are also, it stays in a group at least or minimally um, a group of eight. So this we will see. And the last one is the arising or occurrence of matter. How these material qualities of matter, they arise uh, within us and uh, starting from which time and so on. So it's really interesting. So the first one is the enumeration of matter. This is uh, not to confuse you with the numbers, but uh, without understanding the grouping, it's difficult to understand, see the nature. So for the first and foremost, 28 matters are classified into two main categories. The first one is the Mahabuddha, okay? Mahabuddha. In Myanmar, we call Mahabo. And they are the primary elements or the great essentials or the great appearance. Let's say they are the main group. And we also have the matters that depend on that Mahabuddha for arising that we call dependent matter because they cannot arise by themselves. They have to um, arise depending on the four Mahabuddha. That's why um, they are known as the Upa Daya Rupa or the dependent matter. Sometimes you might also find the word derivative, but it is better to call them as the Upa Daya Rupa. So now let's have a look. Mahabuddha, why they become the primary element or why they are great termed as great essentials and great appearance. The first one, uh, right? This is uh, translated as the earth element or the element of extension. So later we will see each of them in a bit more detail. The second one, Abodadu, right? That is the water element or the element of cohesion. And the third being fire element or the element of heat. When we talk about heat, of course, there is cold as well because there is always the um, comparison. Um, that is the de jordadu. And the last one being air element or the element of motion, vayordadu. So why are they called the primary element? Here I have given you the brief explanation. These four elements, they serve as the fundamental constituents or the factors or component of the matter and they cannot be separated. So there is the one term that we got to uh, remember, inseparable. So this is the word that we will uh, often see starting from now. They cannot be separated and they exist in every substance. In which substance? From the most minute, smallest, tiny particle to the most massive or the big mountain, etc. So that's why uh, they are known as the primary elements because they are the basic or the most fundamental factor or the constituent um, of this rupa. And they also form the basic of the material group part of the material group, not only four, because just previously I have mentioned that at least there is eight in the group. So these eight include this four Mahabuddha. So let's move on to another slide. Here we have more explanation. Mahabuddhas are primary element. Element means Dadu, right? Dadu. In the sense that they bear, bear here means they possess, their own intrinsic nature. Here, this is the definition of the word element or datu because it sounds technical, then we got to know this as well. Atanor, atanomi, uh, own, uh, sabawam, nature, dari, deep meaning bear, bear own nature, or bear own intrinsic nature. That's why they are known as the element or datu. When we talk about nature, just as these four primary elements, they have their nature. We human beings also have different nature. 
even in the family, we can be totally different from each other, right? Then, Mahabuddhas are great essentials. Why? Because they are indispensable for the existence of all material phenomena that are present internally. It means within us, within individual, and externally in our environment. We have this Mahabhuta in our body and in our environment. So whatever we look or we analyze our physical body or our environment, there is nothing more than these four Mahabhuta or this um, great essentials physically. And another explanation, Mahabhuta's are great appearance because the massive substances, big or giant or the great substances are the manifestation of the nature or existence of these four matters. Uh, we can see in, in our environment, we can see the tree, the building, the mountains, the rivers, right? All these are the manifestation or the how it uh, appear uh, in our environment. So let's move on to see the nature of the uh, primary elements. So it says that this physical body, our physical body is composed of the four primary elements. Chadu maha bhutiko ayam kayo. Ayam means this kayo body, this body. Chadu maha bhutiko is composed of, is made up of these four primary elements, right? Then let's see the first one, nature of earth element, that is the patawi jadu. So, when we talk about earth elements, we will not talk about the physical earth or the earth itself, but we will talk about the quality that is inherent or that is remain in earth. So that is the meaning. Uh, like the earth, but we serves as the foundation for the existing material phenomena. So uh, I have mentioned that we have altogether 28 kinds of matter which we classify into two main categories. The first one being this primary elements or Mahabuddha and the other being the uh, dependent matters or Upadhaya Rupa. So Patawi is the foundation for the remaining matters. So that is the meaning. So earth being basis, that is the physical earth, the earth, the, the mother earth, which we often um, mention or refer to as Mother Earth is the basics for trees, mountains, buildings, etc. to exist. Because all these things uh, in our human world uh, on Earth, all these things, they have to exist or depend on the Earth. That's why it is the foundation. So quality inherent in the Earth, just as I have mentioned, we don't talk about the Earth itself, the quality that is there. That's why it is known as the rupa is translated as the material property or material quality, which you first seen, you seen in the previous slides. So Patawi, the nature of Patawi, it is to expand or to spread out. That's why at the beginning you have also seen Patawi is the element of extension. Extension means something that expands that expands or that spread out. So it's nature, but we firmness is firm, is stable. It is hardness, of course, right? Then um, here um, I have phone and I touch it and it is hard, right? Then softness, comparing to the phone, then this tissue paper is softer because of the comparison. And we also have lightness and heaviness. So we can understand that the nature of Patui include hardness, softness, lightness, heaviness, and firmness. So when I touch the tissue paper, this is also a kind of ruba. And what, which nature is prominent is the, the soft nature is prominent. And in the same way, when I touch this phone, the heart nature, it is prominent. 
And comparing to this tissue, this is heavier and this is lighter. Right? There is always a comparison. So you will understand better. Like here, we have 32 parts of our um, physical, 32 part of our physical body, which in Pali we call kotasa. And some of you might be familiar. This means our physical body is composed of all these elements. Now this is uh, the hand, right? The hand. In the hand, we have the nail, the skin, the flesh, and the bones, right? All these substances, when we touch, what we feel is either the soft or the touch nature only. Um, conventionally, we will say, this is my hand, there is mine there. Or you might see Siali is showing her hand as example, right? Hand. But when we remove the skin, when I remove the skin, suppose I cut one finger and remove the skin. Skin is one, one pile, right? The flesh is one pile, the bone is one pile, and the sinews, the nerves, one pile. Then we lost the identity of the finger. Which one can we call as identity? Is the skin the finger? Or is the bone the finger? Is the nail the finger? Is the nerve the finger? Nothing can be termed as or called as finger. So finger is a combination of all these things which in which the nature of hardness or softness, but we to is prominent. So here, this 20 bodily parts head, hair, body, hair, nails, teeth, skin. It is a group of five. So it's, uh, it says skin pented. Pente means five, right? Skin pented. In Pali, Kesa, Loma, Naka, Danda, the jaw. The jaw, the jaw or the jaw means this skin. Penja is five. Ka means having. Penja ka means having five. The ja penja ka means a group of five having this the ja or uh, the skin as the fifth. So what are these to be mentioned? It's very important. We have to contemplate on the nature so that we don't get attached to our physical body and we don't get attached to the body of others and we don't get tormented or lamented when things go their way, not our way, right? And during the time of the Buddha, while a novice was getting his hair shaved, the preceptor or the novice was reciting this one, head hair, right? Head hair, body hair, nail, teeth, skin, neither of them is I, me, or mine, right? Just the nature. So, um, contemplating on this nature, it leads to the penetration of the uh, Dhamma knowledge or the, it can lead to the uh, enlightenment, even enlightenment. So to continue this, and we have also flesh, sinus, bone, bone marrow, kidney, right? This is mamsam, naru, ati, ati menjam, wekam. So these five constitute the kidney pentad. And after that, we have a group of five that is um, ended by, or that has lung as the fifth one. Yes, we are very much familiar. Heart, liver, membrane, spleens, and lungs. Our organ, our physical organ, right? These are also um, prominent in this nature of Pata to hardness, softness and vowel, mesentery, gut, dung, and brain. So starting from head hair to the brain, all together 20. So just uh, like the time of the Buddha, when we become a nun, our preceptor, they will also recite this 32 body parts and another um, different forms of air element and the heat element 
which exists in our body. So this would really helpful us understand the true nature and how our physical body is composed of, right? So this is 20 parts. They are predominant in the earth element. What is the meaning of predominant? They are more noticeable, they are stronger. Predominant, when we see this term, please remember the former concept or the principle. These four great essentials or primary elements or Mahabuddha, they cannot be separated. So it means our physical body is composed of not only earth element, we will have others remaining three sorry elements as well. But in these, Bhattavidatu is the most prominent. Let, let's move on to another one. That is the nature of water element Abhodatu. When we think about water element, what is the function? Suppose the water, there is the water drops on the tissue paper or I feel the some drinking water and I would swipe. I would swipe this with the tissue paper. So what happened? The water spread or the water permeates into this paper. And another nature of this Abhodatu, trickling is dropping, oozing, dripping. Um, Sometimes the water taps uh, are not properly closed, then you can see the water uh, dripping or trickling from the tap or even from the tank and uh, so on. And another nature of this Abhodatu, it intensify or it increases coexistent matters. It help other increase. It means it accumulates. Here we find this term coexistent matters. When we study Abhidhamma, we will often find these terms coexistence or that exists together. Just as these days we uh, talk a lot about the peaceful coexistence among our communities, among the nations and different tribes and races and different religions. Here also, there is the coexistence that exists together, matter that exists together. How does it increase? Suppose you're going to make a bread, you have this flour powder, right? What do you do? You would add milk, you would add butter and all these things and you mix up together. Then you get a dough. Then you will make into different shape that you like. So without this liquid or without this water, how can you make a dough? It's impossible. No creator can help you make a dough without any liquid or any water or milk or any li li liquid form because it helps collect together. Suppose there are some powder spreading and if you want to gather together, you wet your finger with some drop of water and you collect together, right? So it collecting, it is the meaning of composing um, different particles. What happened? After collecting, then it holds and it stick things together. That is the cohesion. What is meant by cohesion? Composing, cohesion, putting things together, sticking things together, combining things together. And this is how it is increased or intensified. But according to Abhidhamma, you know, it might be strange for you to hear Water element cannot be physically sensed. It's impossible. What Siale say is impossible because just now I take shower and how would it happen that I, I can't sense? I um, shower my body with either cold water or warm water, then I, I can feel, then later I feel refreshed. You might say that. But it says that it cannot be physically sensed. But it can be known through the inferential knowledge, what we call a new mana. Guess, we could guess. Suppose um, you practice meditation, 
for one hour. Then you feel peace of mind and you feel light and cheerful in your physical body. Right? You feel so peaceful in the physical body. So for me, I have never been yet to Nibbana, but through that peace, I could guess how peaceful Nibbana would be. Because during meditation, we try to keep away. Keep away means just a short while, temporarily uh, keeping away or dispelling the uh, mental impurities that makes our mind impure. Even for a short moment, if it is this much peaceful, Nibbana, which is known as the highest bliss or the ultimate bliss, it means there is no bliss or happiness that is higher than Nibbana. So in that case, it would be extremely peaceful. So this is how we get or make inference, right? In the same way, um, we can know the nature of this Abhodhatu by inference or just by mind or by understanding. Then what happened what, when you touch water? Suppose you want to wash your hand and you put your hand under the tap. You go to the basin and put your hand under the tap. Then how do you feel? If it is natural or if you choose cold, then you have this cold. Or you might choose the function, warm water, then you will feel warm. So hot heat and warm, this is the nature of the Jodhatu, heat element or fire element, which you will see now, later. Then you would feel it's soft, right? The water is soft. Or if it is a block of ice or a piece of ice, it would be hurt. So hardness or softness, that is the nature of Pachuri. And the heat or uh, cold, that is the nature of this Dejo Datu, heat element or the fire element. And you also feel some pressure, right? You also feel some pressure. You might notice more when you swim or when you walk in water. And these days, uh, I have, we have heard of this um, water therapy as well. For those who are not able to walk properly, uh, after malfunctioning of the um, bone and all these sinews, then the doctor let them walk in the water. It is through the pressure, then try to um, make the limbs stronger. So we can also feel the pressure that is the white water to do, right? Then for our border too, we have oceans, lakes, rivers, Abhodhatu is predominant. And the growth of the tree, the growth of the trees, they are growing well because of this Abhodhatu. Then in our physical body also, there are altogether 12 parts that are in the liquid form. So here we can just see bile, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, fat. Yes, blood and sweat often we can see. And also some um, something that comes from our body, like tears, grease, saliva, mucus, and oil of the joint, and the, some excrement urine. These 12, they are prominent in water element, right? So we have already two so far, but shall we, earth and water, uh, this cohesion or our body. And the nature of fire element, that is the Dejor Dadu. Just as now I have mentioned heat and cold. So it represents temperature. Okay, so this day Jodhatu is sometimes uh, represented by the word temperature. Just as I have mentioned in the example, touching the water, you notice either heat or cold. So this is the nature of this fire element or day Jodhatu. And we also have this body warmth. Osma Dejo is a kind of heat, Osma, body warmth. And the function of this fire element is making things mature, ripen, cooked. How do you cook your veggie or meat to make a cuisine or a curry? You try to cook it by means of heat. 
either on the electric stove or the gas stove or put in the oven by the power of heat. This thing got cooked, right? And sometimes um, when the fruits didn't get easily ripened, then people tend to cover or wrap up with the paper or cloth or sometimes like when we were young, uh, we have seen that it has been put into the rice pot, right? And cover it so that uh, by this, uh, by the help of this warm or heat, it uh, get ripened faster or it get ripened easily. Then how about mature? Our physical body, because of this dejodatu, is getting mature. And it can notice like, you, you can compare my hand with a, a person of 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50, or 40 years, and it is different. The skin got gradually wrinkled, not very full and flashy like before. The skin, the face, and the hair turning gray, and our teeth also get broken. All these wrinkles, it is because of this stage or tattoo. And because this stage or tattoo can make uh, things ripen or cook, it also can say it makes things soft. So this um, softness, mudu, this is also that of the fire element, stage or tattoo. So in our physical body, we have four types of heat. Heat that causes fever. Above the no, if the temperature go above normal, then we say we are running temperature, right? This is Santapana Dejo. It brings heat. It can cause fever. And another one, burning heat, that is more um, severe, stronger. That is the Dehana Dejo. Like when there is burning heat, then people say, oh, too hot, like temperature 103, 234, and like you can notice, or oh, this burning heat is apparent or prominent at that time. And the third one is one that I mentioned. Heat that causes aging. Our body is gradually moving or driving towards that age, or the old age, or the changing or the affliction of diseases, that is the jirana dejo, okay, jirana dejo. And the last one, digestive heat, pachaka dejo. So the last one, digestive heat, uh, it says that it is um, because of our karma. So in that, some people have good digestion and some people don't have. So we try to adjust by the help of the medicine or some um, exercise. And the last one, the nature of air element, Vyodatu. Vyodatu, the nature of motion, pressure, movement. Now I'm sitting in the chair because I want to. I want to in the sense that I want to share the knowledge with you and you also want to learn Buddhist teaching, the knowledge. And even though some of you might have, might know more than me, at least uh, they have patience to listen again. So everybody is uh, sitting in a chair or either in a cushion or sofa. So this is caused by our mind, our mind to sit. So we call this as the Jaita Jia Wayo. Jaita means mind. Jia comes from the Pali word Jata. It is caused by, caused by Jada. This why your dad to caused by Jada. So now I, I, I'm stretching my hand because I want to give example and I, I, I'm moving back, right? This is also, these are performed by the why your dad to movement. So distension, expanding, stiffness. Sometimes we feel so stiff in the body, then this air element is in excess. So um, as you can see here, our physical body gets sick. When these four primary elements or great essentials, they are not in balance. If one is excess, like stiffness, this fire data is too much, 
uh, then you feel so uh, heavy in the body. Sometimes this arbor datu is prominent. You, your nose might be running or you may have loose motion, for example. Sometimes you feel that your head is so heavy, so hot, as if it has been pounded by a hammer or so. Then Patuvi datu is prominent. Then the uh, is prominent means, sorry, it is excess, is getting over. That's why it's important to have all these elements, four primary elements in balance. When they are in balance, we feel good, we are healthy. Then six types of air, air elements. Sometimes you have this belching, you eat something, you have is in digestion, the air that move up. That is the odanga matwada, oda mean above, gamma mean going up, going air. Air that moves down from the body and air that moves in the belly. Sometimes you can feel the wind moving in your belly or sometimes when you are hungry, then you can hear that sound. And air that moves in the intestine, that is the potassia water. And air that moves in the limb, anga, manga, lusarino water. In some people, this vayodatu is very prominent. You press any part of the body, either uh, fingers or hands or head or leg, then the air come out. And another one, what is most important for us, air that breathes in and out, asasa basasa water. So we can see that our physical body is composed of these 42 elements. That is the 32 body parts in which 20 uh, is prominent in the Pitavita to hardness or softness and 12 in the water element, cohesion, fluidity, liquidity, coherence and four elements dominate in the fire element and six in the air element. So what happened when we understand this? Not to um, make you remember all these numbers, but at least when we have a look and got the basic understanding that our physical body is composed of these things, then what happened? This understanding helped dispel or remove the wrong view of being or individual sata or jiva myself my soul like um oh, my skin is so bright and brilliant oh, my hair is so shiny and uh like uh, my physical body uh, this is a uh, very fit like we have much liking to our physical body then it will also be reduced and this um, wrong view of attaching to this physical body with the thought of our own property, it will be dispelled. So what is existing within us is mere existence of only nature. So here we have this teaching, Nesata, Sata means being or individual, Nesata, not, no being, no individual, Jiwa, Jiwa means soul, because during the lifetime of the Buddha, there are many teachings which accept the soul, the existence of the soul. Some uh, teachings or some, there were some belief, even today there are some belief that at the end of this life, it means when we are die, that soul come out from our physical body and that move or that transform, uh, transmigrate, just as people migrate from uh, Myanmar to some other country or some other people migrate to the third country and so on. That so also migrate, transmigrate from this body to another. That kind of wrong view will be dispelled when we understand our physical body is the mere combination or the existence or combination of all these natures. So Nesata, no individual, no being, Nejiwa, no soul, Sabawa, nature, dhamma, only Sangvejanti, that exists. So this is um, uh, very helpful for contemplation. Then after talking a lot more on a lot about the four primary elements, let's see another group. Because at the beginning, I have mentioned that we have altogether 28 matches 
of which the four primary elements or the great essentials in Pali is the Mahabuddha, right? They are the uh, main group. And this another group, dependent matters, Upa, Daya, Rupa, they depend on the Mahabuddha for arising. So these 24 matters, they are again divided into 10 groups. The first one, sense organs, Pasada Rupa, Pasada Rupa. Later we will see um, individually. Sense organ mean eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body, through which we have the sense of um, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching, right? The sense organ. And the object matter, Gojara Rupa. So that is the another word you find for the object. Before you have learned that uh, the Pali term for object is the Aramana or the Alambana. So here there is a new term you find, Gojara Rupa. Okay. So it is seven. And uh, here I have written four plus three Mahabuddha. The first group, we have four Mahabuddha. Patawi, Abo, Dejo, Wayo. So from these four, three Mahabuddha, they are already accounted again as the object matter. So you will uh, understand better as we move on. So not to get the numbers repeated or overcounted, I have mentioned that way. So object matter itself is seven, but when they are to be counted together with the Mahabuddha, we have to take only four. Otherwise, the number will be uh, more than 28. Then the matter of sex, Pawa Rupa, the state of being male and female, that is two. And matter of heart, Hadiya Rupa, on which the mind depends, that is one. And matter of life, Jivita Rupa, that is one. When we talk about Jivita, this is the Rupa Jivita. As for the mind, Nama, or the life of the mind, we have this Jiwi Dendariya, or faculty of life. It is a mental state, and it is included in the seven universal, along with contact, pasa, feeling, Vedana, and then uh, motivation, Jedana, uh, sorry, perception, Sanya, motivation of volition, Jedana, right? That is uh, organizer. And then one pointedness being uh, concentrating on the object. Then we have this uh, faculty of the mental life, Jiwi Dendariya, and the last one, attention Manasikara. So that Jiwi Dendariya is the life of the mind, consciousness and mental state. And the one we are having here, Jiwi Da Rupa, that is the matter of life. This is for Rupa. And of course, we have the matter of nutrition. Ahara Rupa. Okay, so uh, starting from the first one, sense organs. And to that sense organ, the object would come and touch. That's why we have the sense consciousness. So the first one, sense organ, object matters, matter of sex, matter of heart, matter of life, and matter of nutrition. Number one to six. If we count all together, 14. And then along with the four Mahabuddha, all together 18, they are real matters. I, will, I have explained detail in the next slide. This is just an overview. Then after that, we have this um, matter of limiting Parecheda Rupa. This is for the material group only. Because when we say about different object, there is space. Now I would say that uh, I'm, uh, there are some tables around me. In this table, I put my iPad and I have the mouse. And in the front table, then I have this um, laptop. And on my left, I have books. And here, this is water cup. So there are some small tables around me. Then why do I say there are many tables? Because there is space in between. Then in the same way, when we talk about the material group, then there is also the space. So this limiting me just to um, make a boundary of the material group. This is the meaning. And matter of communicating, that is the uh, body sign. 
body sign, often I often show you example. Then I, I, I move my body as a signal, body language. And I, I'm talking a lot. This is also verbal intimation. These are matter of communication. Uh, don't worry, you have all the details later. And matter of distinction, this is five. And the characteristic matter, Lekana Rupa, that is four. So number seven to 10, these 10 kind of matters, they are not real Rupa. They are just the special quality or behavior or mode of Rupa. But since they have to arise depending on the matter, they are also known as the uh, matter. Then let's see sense organ. So sense organ here refer to the sensitive part of each organ. Right, this is my ear, but this earlobe, it cannot hear, right? There is some sensitive part inside my ear. It's say in, in, in a shape of a, a ring or in the shape of some smooth hair at that particular place, then there is this. Uh, the science say it is eardrum, right? When the eardrum, it got damaged, then we won't be able to hear or we won't e hear properly. But suppose I, I have cut here in my ear, I can still hear because the sensitive part is not yet damaged. So when we refer to the sensitive organ, it refer to the sensitive part. Here I like that word, capture the object. Capture the object. Uh, Rector Seattle give this example. Suppose you have a television at home, there is the antenna or so that receive the waves. Um, so it is like that. And it serves as the base for the sense consciousness. It means sense consciousness arises depending on these sense organs. That is the meaning. So sensitive matter of the eye or eye sensitivity. So these are some technical terms. Jakku Basada. The Pali word name is Jakku Basada. And so is the sensitive matter of the ear, ear sensitivity, sorta pesada, nose sensitivity, gana pesada, tongue sensitivity, jiwa pesada, and body sensitivity, kaya pesada. So apart from this body sensitivity, the other four, eye, ear, nose, and tongue, the sensitive part, but the power that can capture the object, that can feel the object, lies only in particular place. The ear cannot see, the ear cannot smell, right? So only the eye can see. So when we talk about eye, here I have mentioned, Abhidharma explains two kinds of eye, eyeball or the composite eye. We have the eyeball but not the whole piece can see, right? This is known as the sa-sambara jaku, the eyeball itself, and the sensitive eye, which the doctors might call the retina, where the image can form. Only that sensitive part or particular part can uh, capture or reflect. Only in that part, the image can be reflected. So apart from this physical uh, body sensitivity of the fifth one, Eye, ear, nose, and tongue, their sensitive part lies only in the particular place. I don't think I have much time to explain all this, but for body sensitivity, it is spreading throughout the whole body. That's why whichever part of the body that we get hurt, then we have pain, we have suffering. But when our nail get longer, we have to cut it. And for you, because you have long hair, you have to have your hair cut, right? And sometimes, um, suppose I cut my finger and after it got healed, there is the dead cell, right? Dead cell or the dry skin. Then I remove that, I don't feel pain anymore. So except the tip of the hair, the tip of the nail and dry skin or the dead cells, the body sensitivity is spreading or that is present in the whole body. So this is what we have to note. Another one, sense organ, Gautara Rupa. 
here I have written either seven or four. And now you will understand why it has to be counted in different ways. So this sense organ serves as the object of the sense consciousness. When we talk about seeing, there must be the object that is seen with the eye, object of the eye, right? This is we call visible object. This is the technical term here. So visible object or visible form. Sometimes it is also translated as uh, represented by the word color or form. Because whatever seeing you can see with your eye, there is the color and the form or the appearance. So this Rupa Ramana, the full name is the Rupa Ramana. Right? Aramana is the object, Rupa is the visible, so visible object. But in short, this Rupa Ramana is also called Rupa. Then it's important that we don't get confused. Which part are we focusing now for this sixth lecture? We are focusing on our physical body, which in Pali is called as Rupa. So that Rupa, it refers to the Rupa or physical body as a whole, and it is composed of altogether uh, 28 matters, which we classify into either primary elements and dependent matters. So the whole 28 matter is also called Rupa. But here, the object of the eye, visible form, shape, appearance, color, this in brief is also called as Rupa. So we have to understand according to different context. So when you see Nama and Rupa, right? we are composed of Nama and Rupa, mind and matter, this Rupa refer to this physical body or 28 matter as a whole. It's a big group. But this visible form is one of the 28 Rupa. So please understand according to different contexts. Sound, that is the Sada, Sadaramana, smell, in brief we call Ganda, Gandaramana. Ganda and Gana is different. Ganda is the smell, Gana is the nose. So some people who recite Patana have to be careful not to make mistake, right, Ganda. And I encourage that it's not recited at very first or very quick speed. It should be clear. Every word that you recite should be clear. Uh, so that the meaning didn't get lost or the meaning didn't get changed. Taste, rasa, or rasa ramana. And the last one here, tangibility, that can be touched with the physical body. This is the putapa or putapa ramana, right? So here we have explanation. Tangibility is a combination of three, earth, fire, and air element. So these three are Mahabuddha. Now there is the table here I'm touching. I could sense the hardness. And I could also sense it is just room temperature. Let's say it is not cold, right? And there is also the nature of this wire or tattoo that support it to exist. So what I could touch is the nature of hardness, softness, heat and cold, and the motion supporting this nature. So that's why these three Mahabuddha, Batawi, earth, Dejo, fire, and wire, air, they are to be grouped under tangibility or that can be touched with physical body. So whatever you take hold of, what you feel is this nature only. Regardless of whatever object it may be, either tissue, paper, or phone, or book, or here the clock, or whatever it may be. So it uh, included in this tangibility. Here, water element is subtle. So it cannot be physically touched, but to be known through the inference and numana. So here I have explained again. So there is also note why sense object is to be taken as either seven or four. Mahabuddha are already listed and sense objects are taken as four when they are counted together with Mahabuddha. So because tangibility 
is not a different matter, but it is a combination of three Mahabuddha. That's why when this Gojara Rupa or sense objects are counted together with Mahabuddha, we have to take only four because three are already in three that um, compose tangibility, they are listed under Mahabuddha already. That, that is the meaning. So let's move on. Then after this sense organ and sense object, we have this uh, matter of sex, bhava rupa. So femininity, eti bhava, and masculinity, bong bhava. So what is this bhava rupa? The source of material qualities from which the idea of male and female are derived. So looking at uh, the mark, the sign, normally we don't have beard or moustache, right? Except when there is some hormonal changes, uh, because I have seen um, a Korean um, Bekuni long time back, and she said that she has some moustache. And because she has taken some medicine, and because of the hormonal changes, there it is there. But normally we don't have it, right? And we also don't have this Adam apple in the uh, ladies. So the mark, the sign and the walk. Uh, but these days it's a little bit um, difficult to differentiate the state of being male and female um, in the scope of the walk. Because um, even like the gents and lady, they, they can manage different kind of work. But basically the work that they do are also different. And the body structure. There might be some exception, but what we talk is about generally and gait and way of walking, deportment, movements, all these are different. So looking at these signs and symbols and appearance um, and the job, we can see, oh, this, this is male, this is female, that is the meaning. It does not refer to the organ itself, but it refers to this, uh, the source the source of the material quality. So it is important to understand. And matter of heart, Hadeya Rupa. And it is also uh, being the seed of mind. It is also termed as Vachu or Hadeya Vachu. But for those who recite Vatana, you would see Vachu, just Vachu. So we, you would see different term, Hadiyat Rupa or Hadiyat Vatu or Vatu that refers to the heart. And here heart refer to the mind and Vatu is seed. So Hadiyat Vatu is the seed of mind. So where does it lie? It spreads in or it lies on the blood inside the heart. Uh, it says that there is there are some amount of blood inside the heart and that Hadiya Vatu, it depends arising on that. So it is the seed or base of mind, except dense sense consciousness, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching consciousness. And why are these 10 taking into exception mean seeing? It depends on eye, right? Only the eye can see. Hearing, depend on ear sensitivity, smelling on the nose sensitivity, tasting on the tongue sensitivity, and touching on the body sensitivity. That's why these 10 are to be taken into exception. And uh, there is always the question of where does that Hadi to lie? And we have the explanation by many scholars. And here I would like to share um, the thought or the understanding of our rector Siado, uh, Venerable Dr. Nanda Malabi Wamsa. Siado say that in the teachings of the Buddha or in the Dhamma Singhani, the first Abhidhamma text, because we have seven Abhidhamma texts, the first one is the uh, Dhamma Singhani, that is the enumeration of the Dhamma. It appears the, under the name of Vatu. It just generally say Vatu. And Hadiya Vatu, because people have often the question of where does it lie, Hadiya Vatu? Is it in the heart or is it in the brain? And Siadra has given this uh, logical example. 
Suppose you feel something emotional. Either you are happy, or you are sad, or you are afraid. Then you can feel the heart throbbing. But regarding some kind of the walk of thinking, remembering, then uh, people normally do like this. Yeah, they say, "Okay, uh, let me think." Then it, you you press this uh, the head, uh, referring to brain. So it can be um, the location can be any part, either the heart or the brain. The Buddha didn't say anything. The idea is that apart from the ten sense consciousness, the remaining jada they depend on the hardiyavu too. So this is just a brief quotation from the Jiado's uh, explanation, uh, and I hope it helps. Then matter of life, jivida rupa, just as I have explained, jivida indriya. Indriya means faculty. Here, faculty means that has authority or that exercise power or authority or that governs. Uh, maybe like. Ministry, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Religious Affairs and Culture. So each ministry they have their authority only in their respective ministry. And here, life, jivida, it has authority or it has power in the maintaining or protection. So it that's why it say perform the function of protection. The eye is also a kind of faculty. Eye, our eye, sensitive eye, because it has authority in case of seeing, and ear has the authority in the case of hearing, and in the same way, this life has the authority or power in the function of the protection. So it protects the gamma bond matters, gamma jaruba. So now it's new to us. Later we will see. Karma born matters that is caused by karma. So which matters are caused by karma? We will see. So th this matter of life it lies on all part of the whole body. So according to Abhidhamma or Buddhist teaching, when we say we die, both life of nama and life of uh, rupa it ends up. And when I talk about this tejo datu. I hope you remember one word: the body warmth. Okay, that is the osama tejo. So, how can uh, it decide that a person is die? Are you life? Life being the life of this rupa and the life of nama. Osma, the body warmth. Vijnana, consciousness. So in the Mahabharata we have this uh, verse. Are you also maja vinyanam jada gayan sahanti mam apawe do tatha seti niratham vakalengaram? So it say, when our body has no more life, no more body warmth and consciousness, it is decided that we die, and we have been and we lie um, like a piece of log on the ground uh, without any value. Uh, that is the meaning. And matter of nutrition, that is the ahara rupa. So that is the nutritive essence that sustains the body. So it's also termed as oja. Okay, ahara rupa, not ahara ahara. Okay, ahara rupa, and another term is the oja. And here it refers to the um, material food. That is food ingested by making into morsel. Morsel means um, in the um, Indian tradition, right, they prepare, they used to take uh, the food with the hand and to put into the mouth, we prepare a mouth, right, just enough uh, to put into the mouth, the morsel, that, that one, that is, that is called the kapala. And kara means making, ahara means nutrition. So kabali gara hara ahara is nutrition gara is making kabala means making into morsel. Now maybe we can save this day one spoonful, right? Or even if you are taking with the chopstick, some 
um, amount that you can uh, carry by the chopstick. Or if you're eating with a fork, also it's the same. So here, what is the meaning of ahara? Because later this oja, it will be included in every material. So ahara me, that brings it effects, right? That means that produces or that causes effect. Uh, that is the translation of the rector shadow. Here I have introduced you with four types of ahara. One is rupa and three is nama. So Gabali, the first one is Gabaligara Ahara, the one that I mentioned, food that brings about material group of which the eighth is Oja. It means it is included in the inseparable. Because at the beginning, I say that the four Mahabuddha, primary elements, they cannot be separated. And the basic unit of the matter or Rupa is eight that exists in a group. And in that eight, that Oja is also there. And Oja formed the last one. That's why um, it's also known as the Oja Tamaka. Here I have not written. So this is the Ruba Ahara. And the other three being Nama Ahara. The first one is Pasa, contact, one of the universal mental states. When there is contact, there is feeling. Remember, um, this is from the Badeja Samobada. So it says that Pasa Bajaya Vedana. When there is contact, there is feeling. Right? When you see something cheerful, uh, you also feel happy. You see somebody in trouble or crying, then you also feel sort of unhappy. These are mental contact, right? Um, then some people, they are afraid of the height. And these day people invented a lot and they make bridge, the glass bridge. And it, as you look down, you can see the very, uh, very deep, um, maybe cliff or something, then people dare not walk because this is uh, looking at the height, then they are afraid. And I also, uh, rela in relation to that, I I, something that strikes my mind is like um, food for thought. Right? There are some uh, series like uh, chicken soup series, food for thought. This is also ahara, right? Ahara, that is the contact produces feeling. It gives you sort of encouragement or inspiration. And another one, manos and jedana ahara, it's referred to the jedana. So um, it causes the rebirth. It means we did many things in our past life and as a result, we are born. That is the Sankara Pajaya Vijnana. Because of the volitional activities, activities that are purposely done out of volition or motivation, they create new life. That is the meaning. And at the very moment of rebirth linking, that is the very first consciousness in our life. We have both Nama and Rupa. Vijnana Pajaya, Nama Rupa. Right? In that, Vijnana um, causes this Nama Rupa to arise. So here I say that second, third, and fourth pertains to the Pateja Samobada or dependent origination. So we have four types of Ahara. Then moving back to the Rupa, we have matter of limiting, Parecheda Rupa. And here, by limiting, we refer to the limiting or the separating of the material groups. Um, because when we talk about the group, then a group of addition. So here uh, I can see about six, uh, six boxes. I mean, it means I can see about six participants because there is a boundary or the mark. Uh, then I know this is one partition, or uh, this is um, one person there. So it is like that. But here space mean limit or separate material groups. Because when we talk about space, there is open space. And also, um, suppose this is the pot, this is the opening. At the 
opening also there is also the space but not that kind of space that is space that limits or that mark or that separate material group if there were no space we would say only one right so that is the parichita rupa or akasa dadu and the next one matter of communicating or matter of signifying that is the sign of the body and speech that cause one's idea to be known to others. I'm expressing my thoughts and my idea through speech. This is called vocal intimation or verbal intimation, which is vignette, and through body sign, kaya vignette. Right? Like when we were young, then we have when we want to get permission from our teacher, like uh, during classroom, we want to. Um, go to the restroom, then we have to fold our hand and we have to do like this. Teacher, excuse me, please may I go out. So this is the symbol of the respect that we have to show to our teacher. And that symbol would be different from one uh, culture to another. Another one, matter of distinction, Vigara So here again, we have this lightness, softness, adaptability again. Because when we study about Jada Siga, we have already seen them. Lightness. But this lightness here refer to the Kaya Lahuda. It refers to the physical body. In the Jada Siga, we have um, among the beautiful mental states, Sobana Jada Siga, or the beautiful universal mental states. I hope you remember six pairs. Lightness of the mind, lightness of the mental states, right? Here, lightness of the physical body, softness of the physical body, and adaptability of the physical body. That is the uh, kaya lahuda, kaya mududa, and kaya kamenyata. These are the special qualities. When do you have these qualities in your mind? Because mind and body are always related, when you are mentally happy, relaxed, then you also feel this good quality in your physical body, right? This is um, the spirit, because they are special quality, they make our physical body different. Suppose there are two situations. In one situation, you feel light in your physical body, but when you are not physically well or when you are mentally upset or sorrow, sorry, then you feel heavy in the body. So here again, I have mentioned to be taking either three plus two intimation. So these three quality and two intimation, when they are combined together, they are known as matter of distinction. So that is the Vigara Rupa and the characteristic matter that is the Lakana Rupa. Lakana Rupa means um, arising, existing, and dissolution. Uh, later I will explain that. So initial arising means first arising. Uh, at the beginning of rebirth linking, it means the moment we were born. Some matters arise. Let's say uh, matter that are caused by karma, they arise for the first time. For example, this um, kaya or the body or eye, when it arises for the first time, it is known as the initial appearance, upajaya. But of course, it has to keep on arising so that it is increasing while we are staying alive or while we are living. So the later arising is known as the sanctity. And whatever that come into existence would have to um, encounter DK, that is the jarata and impermanence and nejata. Uh, so that's the end of the 28 matters. And 18, we can classify them as two. Uh, 18 are real matters that is starting from Mahabuddha. And we have the sense organ, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, object, visible object, sound, smell, taste, and tangibility, and two matters of sex, the state of being male and female, one matter of heart, Hadeyavatu, one matter of life, Jivida Rupa, and one matter of nutrition. These 18, they are real matters. 
because they possess intrinsic nature, they are known as the Sabhava Rupa, each has their own nature. And they are concretely produced matter being produced or caused by four conditions, Kama, Jeda, Udu, and Ahara. That's why they are known as the Nepana Rupa, just to familiarize with you with some name, not Nebana. Right? Nebana is to be spelled with N-I-B-B-A-N-E. This is N-I-B-B-H-A-N-N-E, Nepana Rupa. And it can be the object of insight meditation, that is the Samasana Rupa. So you can take any of these during your meditation. And the remaining 10, matter of limiting, that limit the material group, and matter of communication, that is the body sign and the speech, and matter of distinction, three special qualities of lightness, softness, and adaptability, and the characteristic matter. They are not real matters, but they are special modes quality or behavior of the matter, right? Uh, suppose you went to, you, you go to the um, restaurant and you order some meal and there is the main course and there are some side dishes that they might offer you. So what you say is you just eat the main course, not the side dishes. And in Yama tradition as well, if you go to the um, Yama cuisine shop, then you might order one kind of meat or two kinds of meat curry, but they would serve you some salad or some fish base or vegetable as the serving. So it is like that. And classification of matters. So after seeing them, now we will classify by two ways. The first way is the single full method. It means it is only one. Let's see, all 28 matters are rootless. It means they do not associate with roots. So when talking about this classification, we need to compare with the mind or jada. In the jada, we have jada together with root. Let's say craving loba, hatred dosa, delusion moha. Or when you are generous, that is aloba. And when you cultivate loving kindness, adosa. Or when you have wisdom, amoha, right? So these jada, they are together with these roots. So they are jada with the roots. But there are some jada without the roots as well. Like seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. They don't have any root, according to Abhidhamma. They, when the uh, object get into combination or get into contact with the physical senses or sense organ, we have sense object. So they are just mere resultant. They are, there is no loba dosa moha at the moment of seeing, right at the moment of seeing. So when we talk about jada, there is twofold, jada with root, jada without root. But when we come to the matters, all the matters are ahe dukkha, rootless. And they, are, they depend on four conditions. That's why they are known as the sapajaya. And they are objects of taint. Taint is the asawa. So here I have mentioned uh, three factors, craving, loba, wrong view, deity, and delusion, moha. So when these are the objects that we get attached to, we crave for or we hold them by means of wrong view as this is mine, this is my property, my family, and all these things. And I mean, in the sorts of attachment, right? And delusion. So they are known as the Sasawa. And again, they are conditioned by <clears throat> Kama, Jeda, Udu, and Ahara, in that they are known as the Sankata, right? And Nibbana is unconditioned. Nebana is the asankata differently or on the contrary. Uh, mundane, but dane by nature to five clinging aggregates. Uh, because this rupa, they become the object of clinging. Uh, the five aggregates like um, rupa, vedana, sanya, and the mind, they become the object of clinging. Uh, that's why whatever rupa would it might be, it belongs to the mundane. 
That's why it is known as Lokia. When we come to the Jada, we have mundane consciousness, Lokia Jada and Supra mundane consciousness, Lokodra Jada. But when we come to Rupa, all Rupas are mundane Lokia. And pertain to sense fear, object of sensual craving, that is the Kama Vajra. But in the case of the Jada, Jada are classified in terms of the sense fear, Kama Vajra, form sphere, Rupa Vajra, and non-material or immaterial sphere, Arupa Vajra. But in the case of Jada, all are Kama Vajra. And the next one, cannot aware of or take the object, that is the Anaramana. It means Rupa cannot be aware of the object. Just opposite to or contrary to Jada. The nature of Jada is knowing the object, awareness of the object. But when we come to Rupa, it cannot take the object. It is the object of the, of the mind or the Jada, right? Anaramana. And not to be abandoned like mental defilements, Pahadaba means to be abandoned. Um, when you can abandon the wrong view, um, and the doubt, Vijikeja, Deity and Vijikeja, when you have no more wrong view, you never say that the Buddha's teaching are wrong, or the Buddha or the Triple Gem, Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha did not exist. There is no value in uh, doing marriage or taking care of the parents or practice of meditation and all these. And when you can clear away all the doubts and wrong view, when you can really uproot it, and when you have the unshakable faith in the triple gem, then you are a sotabana. So when you become sotabana, you eradicate wrong view and um, doubt. Deity and Vijikeja. But you do not eradicate or you do not abandon. You do not remove any uh, matter. What you remove is just the attachment or wrong view or doubt that arises depending on matter. So in that, it's also very important to know that. And classification of matter, that is the twofold analysis. Uh, so just to introduce you, Five sense organs, they are internal because they are essential in life. Without eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body, how would we communicate? So the remaining are external. And the sense organ number two is the base of mind. It refers to six kinds of matters, sense organ and heart base. I have already explained five sense organ. They are the base for the five sense consciousness. And all the remaining consciousness depend on heart base. That's why they are known as the base of mind or Vatu Rupa. Uh, number three is the door of mind. It is a metaphorical usage. What is the purpose of door? We come in and we go out. In the same way, the object, they come in like visible object or the form or appearance, it comes through the eye door. It did not really enter your eye, but metaphorically, it gets into contact me, it enters the door. And two communication, um, this body intimation, bodily sign and vowel intimation, speech. So through that speech, we accumulate karma. Now we are sharing marriage. This is Kusala karma. And through either bodily sign or through some abusive words, we can accumulate Akusala Kama, right? So they are metaphorically known as door of mind. And five sense number four is the faculty, Andrea Rupa, five sense organ, two sex matters, and life matter. Uh, that is the Jivita. They are termed as faculty. Faculty means having authority in their respective case. That's I have already explained. And the remaining non faculty. And gross matter, it means easily understood. That can be easily understood or close to the wisdom eye. And it refers to the five sense organ and seven object matters, right? Five sense organ and seven object matters. And the same 12 kinds of matter, 
sense organ and object matter. I think among the 28 rupa, that would be the easiest one for us to understand. So they are metaphorically known as near matter. Number six, sandy gate rupa. And number seven, with impingement or striking, it means they get in, into contact with each other. So these 12 matters, they are known as the gross matter or lariga rupa or sandy gate near matters. Like when somebody is um, has same liking or share same thoughts and liking and have understanding, you say, uh, my dear and near one, right? So in the same way, this is the near matters. So five, six, and seven, number five, number six, and number seven, they just refer to the same type of matter and they are given just different names. And number five, gross matter all are rupa is 12, and on the right column here, remaining matter, subtle matter is 16, right? In that 16, then we have this um, water element arboda too. I have explained water element is very subtle, so it cannot be physically sensed, but to be known through the uh, inferential knowledge or guessing, right? So um, these words you will find quite often, olarika and sukuma, it's form a pair, gross matter and subtle matter. If you study Abhidhamma, you will often see this term. Number eight, matter result that are result of gamma, that is the 18 gamma rupa. So later we will see this 18. And to continue, a uh, matter that can be seen with the eye is just one. That is the visible object or form or color. So whatever can be seen with the eye, it comes under this name, visible object. So the remaining we cannot see um, with the eye. Number 10, matter that receive or take the object, that is the five sense organs. It is also metaphorical usage because um, when we, let me go back here, the, the second last one, cannot aware of or take the object, right? It says that matter cannot aware or take the object. This is one statement. And now what we have here, matter that take or receive the object. So this number 10, please understand this is a metaphorical usage. It may, depending on I, we have seeing consciousness. So it says that um, matter receives the object. We have this simple example. Suppose you visit a school, uh, like a kindergarten school, then you would see children playing, shouting. They are happy and it's very noisy. What would you say? You say, the class is very noisy, right? Actually, the class cannot do any action, but the children that are staying in the classroom are noisy. That's why you say the class is noisy. So that statement of making the class being noisy is set depending on the place. And here also the same, because sense consciousness, seeing, hearing, etc., can arise, has to arise depending on that sense organ. So metaphorically, it says they take the object. Then what is important is this number 11. Inseparable matters, okay? It is for Mahabuddha, you already have this concept. They are inseparable, they cannot be separated. They are always together. Form, that is the visible object. Smell, taste, and nutrition. It says that these eight cannot be separated. Okay, you tear, you torn this tissue paper, there will be some powder. Or suppose uh, you, you break this cup, then you will have some powder. And even in the smallest particle, we have this eight. The nature of hardness, softness, better we, the nature of cohesion, sticking things together, right? Powders are stick together to make this tissue. And it is to be dry with the tejo by the help of the fire element tejo dhatu. And vayodhatu, it helps support to be upright. If there were no vayodhatu, it won't be able to 
stay upright. And then we have, this can be seen, whatever can be seen with the eye form. Yes, yeah, smell. There is some smell of this tissue paper and the taste. You might have some taste. It might not be tasty, but the taste is there. And the nutrition here, nutrition means that can give you some effect. Suppose you put poison and put in your mouth, the effect is there, right? The nutrition here does not mean uh, that gives you energy because that's why I have taken much time to explain different kind of nutrition. Nutrition means that causes or that produces effect. The effect of the poison, or you put chili, the effect of the chili, right? So these eight are always there, eight inseparable, so at least we got to remember these eight. For Mahabhuta, and then form, smell, taste, and nutrition. So at least we got to remember these eight. Um, this chart explains like, uh, which matters are caused by this condition. Because uh, I have introduced you about four kinds of conditions, Kama, Jeda, Udu, and Ahara, right? So here, just to give you some example, I won't go much detail here. On the left column, we have Kama, right? And then produced matter is nine. That means sense organ, uh, Basada, and sex, that is power, heart, Hadaya, and Jivita. And on the on this column, you know, Kamaja. Under Kamaja, you find two columns. Under Kamaja, you find two columns. SB, SBEC, I refer to specific, specific or particular. And COM, COM, refer to common. By specific, it means it is caused by only one condition. That is the meaning, specific. So, can see this way. Then sense organ, sex, heart, and life. They are produced only by karma. And if we move down, jada. Now you please match uh, from left to right column, jada. Jada means intimation, bodily intimation, body gesture, and the, uh, the words. They are caused only by jada. They are produced only by jada. So it is the um, you would see here, Jadaja, two specific thing here. And sound, sound can be produced by Jada and Udu. Okay, that means the sound that come from my mouth, that is the Jada. And here I can hear the clock, tick, tick, and right. And this is produced by, caused by Udu. It means in the living things, sound can be produced by either Jada or Udu. Jada is clear, by Udu means temperature. Sometimes you, you would hear some air moving in the physical body. It's, I have already explained as a kind of the uh, air element, why you have to a sound that move inside the body. But in the outside things or in the inanimate things, you would hear microphone. So now the sound that you hear, my voice that you hear come through the systems. It already become Udu. But originally that comes from my throat. It is the Jadeja. Or that goes through the microphone or some kind of system. It's already changed into Udu. And the sound of the thunder, sound of rain, sound of air, any sound uh, that exists around us or in the non-living things or that is produced by material or by nature, it produced by Udu. And then, um, eight inseparable and space. Here I have uh, shown you with the star or asterisk sign. They can be caused by all the four conditions, Gamma, Jada, Udu, and Ahara. So here, what is there is this 18, this column 18, Gamma, 18. Then this 18 
we got by nine uh, specific matters, sense organs, five sense organs, two sex matters, heart and life. These nine are produced or caused only by karma, that is specific, and the remaining nine, they just eight in subrible and space. They are common in the sense that they are produced by all the um, four conditions. That's why they come under this common cause. So altogether, Dhamma Rupa is 15. So it has to be um, uh, seen or understand that way. As for now, I, I don't think I have time to explain all this. So Gamaja is 18. Now we go from top to bottom here. Gamaja, Jadaja, Uduja, and Aharaja. Gamaja is altogether 18. Jadaja is 15. Uduja, 13. And Aharaja, 12. So uh, if you have time, then you can uh, read later. Or if you just, uh, for your understanding, then it's okay, even if you don't view later. Then causes of matter, rupa samotana. And when we say gamma that causes matter, which gamma? It's a 25 past gamma. That is the 12 akusala gamma and wholesome, rooted in loba, uh, loba mula jeda, rooted in hatred, dosa mula jeda, rooted in delusion, moha mula jeda, altogether 12. And the uh, eight sense fear wholesome consciousness mahakusala jeda. I have given you the example. Example of this um, in the last lectures. So that is eight and five material fear wholesome consciousness altogether twenty five. So our karma that we have done in our past life produce effect in this life. It means what we are doing now will give effect in the next life. Then it says that any of these gammas, so 25 shows the possibility, and any of these karma arises within us in our um, beings, it means your kusala karma will produce good result in you. And so is my kusala or akusala karma will result in myself, not in you, that is internally. And producing 18 karma bond matters, karma rupa, and starting from the arising moment of rebirth linking mind, pati sandi jeda, and at every mental moment. So I hope you will understand from this three phases or three stages. That is the lifespan of nama and rupa. So Whatever phenomena it may be, either jada or mental state jada siga or rupa, it has to go through these three stages. That is the arising, we call obada, arising moment, obada kana, existing moment or presence, titi kana, and dissolution moment, that is the banga kana. So each lasts for one sub moment. Then how long is that sub moment? It's very, very short, even shorter than seconds. Because, because it says that even in the one blinking of the eye or one flash of lightning, millions of jadas arises and disappear. So it would be very short moment. Then it says that the lifespan of Namar is the one mind moment or one thought moment. But when we come to the rupa, then it is 17 times longer. You can see the bottom two asterisk signs. Because the existing moment of rupa is 49 sub moments, it means the mind comes and go more quickly than rupa. Even like your new, um, maybe you have a new book and you just keep in the cupboard. And as time passes by, the color faded away and the paper also get uh, turned into yellow color and uh, the cover or the leather might be eaten by some insects. It's getting into perishing or changing or deforming, but 
their lifespan is short, uh, sorry, apparently longer comparing to the mind. So uh, the lifespan of Rupa is one seven times longer than that of Nama. So the difference lies in the existing moment. You can see this 49 sub moment, right? This is the TT or existing moment. So Rupa is strongest at that moment. So uh, we have to understand this word. Then Jada. Some of you have already studied Abhidhamma, so you know more about Jada, and some of you uh, might not have. Then uh, at least you can see that there are 75 types of consciousness that can bring changes to the physical body. That is the meaning. For example, when you smile, there can be different jada. Of course, it is with pleasure, somana sasahagata, but suppose you are smiling after doing marriage, and this is the kusala jada. But sometimes the moment you are enjoying your favorite food or when you are enjoying your movie or music, or, right? then with much passion and much liking, at that moment, it, it, it is with the uh, loba mula, that craving or attachment that you are smiling. So it is like that. Then this 75 jadas, I, I won't go into detail here, for example, for us, it is one of the sense fear resultant or Mahavi Jada that we are uh, born as a human being. Then at the moment of rebirth, it produces this uh, mind born matter, starting from which moment? Starting from the arising moment of the life continuum for Venga Jada and at every arising moment. I think it might sound too technical for you. So for the time being, you can listen to me this way. The very first day that our life has three portions, right? We are born, we live, and we die. So the first one, we are born, we call rebirth linking. Because it links the past life with the present life, it's called rebirth linking of a descent data. And only the very arising or very first moment, arising moment of the rebirth linking is known as the rebirth moment. And the remaining we call life continuum or during lifetime. It means now we are um, living our life, this means during lifetime. During lifetime, we can have two kinds of consciousness, active consciousness, he um, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, the five senses, and thinking, all together six types, right? As I'm talking and you are hearing, there is hearing consciousness. And it comes in a process, which we call VT, and these are the active type of consciousness. Then what happened with the Consciousness that arises at the very beginning, let's say Pati Sandi Jada or the rebirth mind. Apparently, we are born as a result of our past good or wholesome karma. You did kusala in the past, and now you have the resultant of good as a human being. So that consciousness is known as the resultant consciousness. So resultant consciousness in karma plane, or we can also say great resultant. I think the Pali word is also easy to remember, Mahavipaka. Let's say our Bhattisandhi Jada is the first type of this Mahavipaka Jada. And the same type of Jada continues, but it is given different name according to the different function. Since it arises for the first time, it is known as the rebirth linking Pati Sandhi, right? And as it continues in our life, not the same jada, I say the same type of jada, 
the same type of jada continues in our life, performing continuing life or life continuum. We call bawenga. Bawenga is a Pali word, and it's a combination of two words, bawa and anga. Bawa is life, anga is factor, life factor. Right? It means our mind must continue throughout the whole life, the same type of consciousness. And as it arises for the first time, it is known as rebirth linking consciousness. And after that rebirth linking consciousness, it is not called as rebirth linking anymore. It changes its name. That is the life continuum, continuing life. Right? Jory is, is another we call Bawenga. So during lifetime, we have only two types of consciousness, active consciousness, and we would say sort of passive consciousness. Active here, we refer to the uh, sense consciousness, eye, ear, nose, tongue, or sorry, um, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and thinking, right? These come in a process. And in between these processes, there are very short moment of this Bawanga Jada. And at the end of the life, we call this death consciousness Juti Jada. So the same kind of Jada arises throughout the whole life. And as they perform different functions, they are given different names. Like you are born as a child, right? After that, you are adult. Then as I grow old, I will be senior uh, person or elderly person. Is this same type of person or different type of person? You would say same person. But if it were same person, why do we grow old? Right? But it is the same person, but passing by the different phases or stages or lifespan of our life, we are given different different like let's say status this is the toddler or this is the teenager or this is the adult or this is the child this is the um, teenager and this is the elderly person in the same way uh, the cheta is given three different names so i try to explain you about the life continuum um, and the another one is the udu or temperature um, it's almost 11, but I will try to wind up and conclude, giving you some idea of how it is like. Then it's udu or temperature. It arises within us. Starting from the second sub-moment, existing moment or TT moment of rebirth mind. So let's say uh, the very first jada in our life is the rebirth linking consciousness. And every jada has three stages, arising, existing, and dissolution stage. So at the very first moment, or the arising moment of rebirth mind, we have the karma, matters produced by karma. And at the existing or TT moment of the same, this rebirth mind, we have this uh, matters produced by Udu. And the second jada is the Bawenga Jada, right? So at the arising moment of that Bawenga Jada, the matters produced by Jada started to produce. So this is the meaning. So I think uh, I won't explain all detail. And Ahara Rupa, Ahara Rupa is the nutritive essence or Oza, and that arises uh, within us um, internally. It means that um, because matter does not arise alone, it always comes in a group, and the minimum being eight, right? Four Mahabuddha, Bachawi, earth element, water element, fire element, and air element. And after that, we have form, visible form, smell, taste, and then we have this nutritive essence. So it means it's already inside us. And when the fetus, it got nutrition from mother, when the internal order nutriment, when it 
get into contact with the external nutrient from mother, then this nutritive uh, essence started to get active or produced. So it explains this one. Then I would like to briefly introduce you about the rupa kalapa, right? Rupa kalapa means uh, just like the mental states or jetasika, matter also possess four characteristics. It means all these eight matters that exist in the material group, they arise together, they exist together, and then, sorry, they cease together, and they have a common base, and they have, um, they exist together, coexistence, so all together, four characteristics. And just as there are four conditions, material groups also come under this four. So material groups born of gamma, born of mean caused or produced by. So this is a technical term. We call gamma kalaba. So we have gamma ja, jaita kalaba, uduja kalaba, and ahara ja kalaba. So seeing this, I hope you will remember. Material groups born of gamma. Right, so the, the first one, the basic unit being eight, right? And we have this life because gamma is um, life or jivita matter is mainly produced by this gamma. So the basic unit become nine here. For us living being, the basic unit in this gamma jakalapa is nine. And to add, what do we add to that? We add I. So it becomes 10. In the second line, you can look horizontally. I take a kudasaka, eight inseparable matters, life and sensitive eye. In this way, there is a group of 10. So the same way uh, should be applied to the ear, nose, tongue, and body. So all they form this 10. So the idea is that inside my eye, there is the sensitive part like the retina, where the image would come or where the image can be captured. In that particular place, there are many groups of this rupa kalaba or the group. Having I as the 10th matter. So many groups are combining. And you look at number six, body decad. As big as um, in accordance with the measure of this physical body, we can imagine how many rupa kalapa or small groups would be combining to uh, make the appearance or to form the appearance of one finger or one hand. So in this way, you can see that our physical body is composed of the material groups like this, the sense organ and the state of me, male and female, they are produced by Kama. So in that particular place, there are millions of these small groups combining together to form this shape. So um, this is the meaning. And here I have given some uh, example or ex not example, the list of the how Jaitaja, Uduja and Aharaja groups are composed. So uh, I, I don't think I go that. Uh, I want to explain this. And I think I will conclude and let me give five more minutes, okay? And altogether, we have 21 material groups. And the first two from the Uduja, that is the pure object. I have already explained, um, suppose there is a small powder from this tissue, even in that particle, there is a combination of eight, right? So it's present in all the inanimate things. But when we come to the sound, it is a combination of nine. In addition to this eight, we have sounds like the sound of the rain and the sound of the wind, etc. So what is important to understand is that, you know, matters that are produced by gamma, they cannot be present in the non-living things, only inside us. Gamma, jada, right? Okay. And then ahara, they can be produce matter or they can bring effect only within us, not outside or in external things. Outside or in the external thing, only these two exist. 
these two kalapa, two types of kalapa exist, I have to say. Then I would like to introduce you with the four kinds of being that come the last section. Those born of egg and the jar, like the chicken and the um, birds and snakes, and born of worm, like we human being, and some animals like the cat and the dogs, um, and the elephant, and born in wise chair, like the insect. And what is strange here? Those born by making the appearance, that is the Opa Bhatika. It means they are born life size. Here it includes devas, brahmas. Devas, they don't have to go into stages like us human being. For us, we are the embryo, embryo developed very gradually. Later you will see now. But for devas, brahmas, being in hell and petas, and more importantly, humans at the beginning of this world, they are born life-size as an adult. So this is another type. So whatever type of being in the 31 planes of existence, they pertain only to this. And this is the meaning. And for us human being, uh, born in mother's womb, at the arising moment of rebirth mind, I say kamaja matters are produced and three, body, and then the state of being male and female, and the Hadiya were two. Only these three Kalaba started. So each Kalaba or each group has 10 type of matters. So three group is the 30 matters. So in the Bhateja Samobada, in the next lecture, I will link to that. In the law of dependent arising, it says, Vainyana Pechaya Anama Rupam, right? Vainyana, because of consciousness, there is mind and matter. It means, since we are born at the very moment of rebirth linking, we have both mind and matter. So this is the message that I would like to give, right? So mind me one of the eight Mahavibhaga Jedas and along with the Jedasika and matter mean these three material group of 30 matters. And here is the development of the fetus as the Gamajarupa. So upon the question of a deity, no, not a deity of an ogre, then um, the Buddha explained this, how our fetus is developed. The first time, during the very first moment of this Padisandhi, then we have this clear or tiny drop of water or like the sesame oil, this is the galala. And for the next week, it is developed into the foamy reddish water. The example is like, when you are going to cook the meat, you wash it and you have this reddish foamy water. It is like that at the second stage. The third stage, soft tissue or, or flesh. And for the next stage, it become a little bit harder, a lump of flesh. And for the next, the five swellings appear. Basaka mean like the branches. So this is for the head, two legs and two hands. So five swellings appear. And later it is followed by the growth of head hair, body hair, nail, etc. So you have the reference here from the Indaga Soda of the Yaka Samyoda. So the final message I want to give, the last slide, matter do not arise alone or singly, but always in a group. And basically composed of eight matters, which are inseparable. Then what is the benefit of understanding this Nama and Rupa, right? There are two fundamental knowledge of Abhidhamma, Nama, Rupa, Parichidanyana. This is the mind, this is the matter, that is the knowledge of discernment of mind and matter, and the knowledge of causality. Like eye consciousness arises depending on the visible object, eye sensitivity, there is light, there is attention, so this seeing is produced by all the four causes. If one condition is lacking, we cannot see. So this is the understanding. Because of attachment, there is sorrow, right? And if you want to be peaceful, you have to remove attachment. So this is the understanding of cause and effect. Because you eat something salty, your hypertension is getting higher and you have problem. So if you avoid that, your problem will be solved. This is the nature of cause and effect. 
So these two knowledges are fundamental in understanding ourselves and the vipassana practice. And by understanding rupa, it dispels the wrong view of being sada or soul jiva, as I have explained. And also it dispels the perception of compactness. Like, uh, suppose I get very much attached to, attached to this phone, but if it is removed into different parts, I cannot find the phone anymore. Is the screen the phone? Is the button the phone? Is the battery the phone? No. Only when they are combined together, this is the phone. And in the same way, like you are very much uh, likened to remain your happy mind to continue. This is the process. But from moment to moment and at every moment, everything, either mental or phenomena, are leading to the impermanence and suffering. So such kind of thing can be dispelled. Uh, so that is the end of the slide. And I think I have fed you too much with the information today. And please excuse me for taking extra time. Thank you very much. And wishing you have a, a good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and good night. So I will conclude by reciting Bodha Sasanam. Bodha Sasanam Jiram Tetadu, Bodha Sasanam Jiram Tetadu, Bodha Sasanam Jiram Tetadu, Sadu, Sadu, Sadu. May the teachings of the Buddha last long. May the teachings of the Buddha last long. May the teachings of the Buddha last long. Well done, well done, well done. Bawa to Sabak Mangalam, Rekhan to Sabak Dewada, Sabak Boda Nuba Wena, Sabak Dama Nuba Wena, Sabak Sangha Nuba Wena, Sada Suki Bawan to Day. May there be all blessings. May you all be. May there be all blessings. Bawa to Sabak Mangalam, may the deities protect you. By the power of the Buddha, by the power of the Dhamma, by the power of the Sangha, may you all be well, happy, peaceful, and accomplished. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sally, I like them. Sally,